Hi, Anissa Coy here with Firehouse Education, and we're here with Ask Anissa's video column this week. So this week we're gonna we're still digging into that great list of questions that my last online class sent to me on our live Q and A. So we're gonna dig into the next one. The next question is: As a starter in content restoration, without having one of your mobile units, on packing and storage, do I need a warehouse? Can I rent a storage unit? Are there moving companies that will store contents for you? Okay, so I'm not aware of moving companies that would store contents for you. I'm gonna guess there may be, especially if you're in a big metropolis area, so you could look into that. Um, having a warehouse is a great idea to store vaults, um, which you can either purchase or make. They're much less economical if you make them yourself. But um, you could have a warehouse where you store the clean contents, which I'm assuming that's what we're talking about here. So we're gonna be dealing with contaminated contents and then we're gonna be dealing with cleaned and uncontaminated contents. So you need to have vaults for each one. And so you need to have an area, if you're gonna have a warehouse, it needs to be big enough that you have an area with vaults that you can store contaminated contents in that are away and not in the same area as vaults that have clean uncontaminated contents in them. So that could mean that you're going to need a lot, quite a bit of space. So depending on where you are, that could be very spendy. And whether or not you're getting paid to store items in a warehouse, you have to pay for that space, especially if you're out signing a lease. So a couple of other alternatives that you could do is yes, you could see in your area if you have a moving company that you could pay to store these items. Um, however, you need to make sure that they understand that these items, again, contaminated and uncontaminated cannot be anywhere near each other. The second, the, and they may not want uncontaminated or contaminated contents being stored in their facility, especially if they store contents for other people, because yes, it could cross contaminate. So another couple of options for you is to check out like a pods or a pack rat type storage situation. That may be something that would be really great for you and your company. The other thing could be renting a uh, uh, storage unit in an actual, you know, like a self storage type facility. I've done that quite a bit. So you want to, however, there's a couple things to think about with that. One is the security that this place has in place. Second is, do you need climate control or is not climate control good for you? Depends on the time of year potentially or the area that you're doing restoration work in. The other thing I want you to think about when it comes to pods or like the pack rat, uh, containers is that you um, there's liability potentially there involved um, where where's the area that you're going to be setting this in is it secure area is it a nice area are you going to be concerned about someone possibly breaking in to the pod or the pack rat that you have items stored in to and also to talk about that I want to I want to bring this up kind of as a side note um, if you are storing someone else's contents you need to have an additional coverage on your business insurance policy and it's called Bailey's coverage okay so make sure that you do have that kind of coverage and that you're covered enough uh, you know have the correct uh, limits on that and the other thing when you're talking about the pods and the storage unit is um, different in different states again I don't know what your insurance commission rules are but for me in my state, I had to have a little extra policy even on my Baileys that covered other people's contents that are in my possession I'm responsible for, but they're not being stored on my property. So like I use pods and I use storage units. That's what I do. So I'm responsible for those contents that are not being stored on my property. They're away from me and yet I'm responsible. So I'd have a little extra uh, policy on my insurance as well, which was no big deal, not very expensive, but just be aware of that. The other thing that I love about doing the storage unit and the pods is that once you're done with the contents, I actually sign, do the paperwork, remove myself from the storage unit or the pod, and I get the homeowner's name on that so that I'm no longer financially or um, in any way responsible for those contents, I turn them back over to my homeowner. So within seven to 10 days of starting a job, I'm no longer responsible for those contents. It's now back on the homeowner's insurance policy to be responsible for that. So those are just a couple of things for options for storing your contaminated